Now, rumors have been swirling around about 3070 Ti's and 3080 Ti's since, well, really since before any Ampere graphics cards launched. And let's be very clear about this. NVIDIA can launch whatever they want based on the dies we already know about. You know, GA-102, GA-104, GA-106. This doesn't require that much effort for them to decide to take a certain cut-down configuration based on the numbers they're getting back on yields and say, we're going to take this, put this amount of RAM on it at this speed, and sell it. They could have launched a 3080 Ti or 3070 Ti months ago, but I don't really know what the point of them doing that would have been when... They can't even keep the cards they're making now in stock. They can't even meet demand, and it seems like people are buying whatever is thrown on the shelf. So why launch anything? Well, I would answer that question by saying you have to assume NVIDIA would rather be prepared before supply meets demand instead of after. They would want to have a full lineup out that makes some coherent sense at every price point before supply meets demand. And furthermore, after seeing what AMD is getting away with with the 6700 XT, well, you got to admit, after NVIDIA saw that AMD can sell what would have been a four or four hundred and thirty dollar sixty seven hundred XT for up to six hundred or more? They're probably thinking we want to cut out of an overpriced new card that people will just buy anyways. We should launch a thirty seventy Ti. And in fact, my understanding talking to people is that GA one hundred four has some of the best yields of the Ampere lineup right now. And if you can make it get close to thirty eighty performance. Well, it takes up less die space. Why not do what AMD did? Launch a smaller die, push to the limits, so you can try to meet demand better. And that's why I do think a 3070 Ti will eventually come out. And like I said in recent Broken Silicons, the smoke coming about a 3080 Ti and 3070 Ti... There's always been smoke, but this time, at least based on people I've talked to, you know, some of the same people that got me information on Big Navi, you know, there seems to be some fire to the smoke this time, and Video Cards seems pretty confident about the 3070 Ti and 3080 Ti coming out in the next few months. So, in addition to what Video Cards is saying, I'm hearing very similar things after I looked into it after I saw that article. And I guess what I'm saying is this. It makes sense for them to launch this eventually... But don't be surprised if it gets pushed back. I mean, heck, video cards is already adjusting when they're hearing the 3080 Ti comes out. These aren't the interesting questions. We know what dies are out there, and we know that NVIDIA can launch them, at least paper launch them, whenever they want to. So what is the interesting question, in my opinion? Well, (laughs) the interesting question to me is how NVIDIA will position and justify the VRAM amount on the 3070 Ti. I'm personally hearing the same thing as video cards and other leakers on Twitter that the 3080 Ti will have a 12 gigabyte buffer, you know, not 20 gigabytes. They want to give it the full bus and save on VRAM probably to make some extra money. And and unlike 10 gigabytes, I do think 12 gigabytes is enough for now for that type of performance. So launching some like 16 gigabyte 3070 Ti doesn't really make any sense. I mean, maybe they'll allow AIBs to sell a 16 gigabyte version, and if they do, I'd actually be interested in it. But I think the base model has to be eight gigabytes for a few reasons. One, to not make the 30, well, not to make the 3080 and 30 uh, 80 Ti look stupid. And number two, because it just doesn't need more RAM. People will buy whatever is on store shelf. So they might as well make extra money. Okay, so then eight gigabytes. What do you price this at when there is a 580 6800? You know, I know MSRP doesn't mean anything, but it could eventually. And if you're NVIDIA you'd probably be thinking we can't launch some weaker card with half the memory for more money. But will it be weaker? You see, that's the funny thing. In my 3070 review, I found that at least after overclocking my sample, I was able to get an almost linear performance increase by overclocking the memory. If I could overclock it by like 15% to get 10% more performance, well, GDR6X is what's supposedly going to be on the 3070 Ti, although I can only confirm 8 gigabytes personally. I haven't technically had GDR6X confirmed from my sources. But let's assume it is. Well, that's over 35% more bandwidth, even with the slowest GDR6X. So combining that with a four, over 4% increase in core counts, 
on average, if it scales relatively how you've seen past cards scale in the past, just as rough math, but it, it could be 20% better. And you might go, well, that's not as good as a 6,800. But according to Tech Power Up and according to TechSpot's recent benchmarks, it actually is. If the 3070 Ti with GDR6X can be even over 15% stronger than a 3070, it could actually edge out the 6800 in performance. And once I saw that, I went, oh boy, uh, yeah, they might actually charge like the same price or more. Um, I, I would say at the very least, this confirms they're going to go for at least 550 I mean, they have to. It has to be at least 10% more than the 3070. And in reality, it would not surprise me if it was $600 right in between the 3070 and the 3080. I mean, at least in raster performance, it'll probably be within about 10% of the 3080 or at least 15%. And they'll say, hey, it's 20% cheaper. And yeah, I know that if we hit MSRPs, most people would say get the 6800. It's about the same performance with double the memory. But at the same time, these aren't normal times, and we're not seeing anything relatively close to MSRP right now. So I guess that's kind of the point of the investigation of this video. There is real evidence that the 3070 Ti is coming out soon. I mean, heck, you can see it being shown on actual websites that have updated support for it. This thing is real. Whether NVIDIA decides to launch it or paper launch it, whatever you want to call it, anytime soon, it's out there. And if it is launched, an 8 gigabyte full GA104 die with eight gigabytes of GDR6X, I think that what NVIDIA will try to do is basically price it the same as the 6800 with half the memory, but say, hey, it's three to 5% stronger, and we know you suckers are gonna buy it anyways. And, well, I'm not really sure what else there is to say besides that. I mean, it's almost like it, it kind of is what it is. Um, I, the only other thing I would add is that the rumors that Samsung's having yield problems, at least based on the people I've talked to, it's absolute bullshit. And if you think about it, if Samsung was having yield problems, why would they be putting such small amounts of memory on the graphics cards? You might as well double the memory because memory supplies wouldn't be the bottleneck and then charge much more money with a higher buffer. But th that's just not what NVIDIA is doing. Partially probably because they know they don't need to, uh, but also because, guys... They have plenty of Samsung dies. The 3070 Ti should be the full 104 die. Yields are great at Samsung. The fact is they're just sending half of them directly to miners, and they want to charge or have as much of a margin as possible with as little RAM as possible. So to answer the question posited by the title and thumbnail of this video, can NVIDIA justify 8 gigabytes? Well, I don't know if you call what I just said justification overall, but it does at least explain how I believe they will try to get away with it. I do believe they will charge at least 550 or more, probably about a similar price to the 6800, and AIB cards will, of course, inflate way past that. And what they'll say is, hey, it's slightly stronger than the 6800, so that makes up for having half the memory. And you know what? Shut up. We know you guys are going to buy it anyways. That is my analysis of what's going on, whether it comes out now, in three months, or never. If it launches anytime soon that is what i think the 3070 ti is and i hope you did enjoy this video this actually might be the last one done from this location that isn't a live stream if i had to guess i am moving of course as i've told my supporters multiple times now and part of that move will be into a new house that hopefully has a more interesting and larger studio that will allow me to do more interesting things. All of this comes from the support of my patrons. I couldn't do any of this without them. So do remember, if you do enjoy the content, consider supporting us at one of the tiers. You get tons of early ad-free access every week to Broken Silicons and exclusive podcasts and the ability to ask guest questions, which speaking of guests, you guys are really going to enjoy the next Broken Silicon. We did something extra fun for this episode because of how well it turned out. Look out for that. And as always, subscribe, share, like, and thank you for watching.